Europe has a massive air travel network. Millions of people opt for the airplane instead of trains, even on relatively short distances. The European Union and national governments are trying to change this. Billions of euros have been invested into modernizing rail lines, building out new high-speed rail lines and launching night trains. In this video, we'll take a look at the current state of travel in Europe and the plan to replace short-haul flights with trains. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing, it's free and it helps out a lot. Thanks and on to the video. In 1978, the Airline Deregulation Act came into effect in the United States. The effects have been felt in Europe as well, which deregulated its airlines in the 1980s and 90s. Since then, European international travel has been dominated by airlines and most notably, budget airlines like Ryanair, Jet2 and EasyJet. These low-cost bare-bones airlines offer cheap flights to many destinations across the continent. Even though their ticket prices are lower than their competition, sometimes as low as 10 euros per flight, these low-cost carriers maintain healthy profit margins, like Ryanair, which maintains a good 4.6% net profit margin even after Covid. The individual member states have also been investing in airport infrastructure to support the growing airline industry, with the most notable investments being the third planned runway at London Heathrow Airport or building more gates at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. In contrast, most of European rail suffers from constant underinvestment, which leads to poor quality service, delays and general disrepair. Many regions of Europe are still waiting for proper high-speed rail, like the Czech Republic, Slovakia or Hungary. Road travel is also being heavily pushed. The 27 EU member states have a total of 74,000 kilometers or 46,000 miles of highways. Right now, a lot of investment goes into urban road projects like the Blanca tunnel system in Prague, which was completed in 2015. It fell victim to induced demand and now brings even more traffic to the city during rush hour. Thankfully, individual nations and the EU as a whole are beginning to invest more into public transport. The European Union is currently championing a few projects and initiatives aiming to move away from air travel while reducing carbon emissions. For example, the Trans-European Transport Network aims to create 9 crucial corridors for road and rail travel. The most important project underway right now is the Rail Baltica high-speed rail line, which is supposed to lead from Poland through the Baltic countries to Finland via an underwater tunnel. Especially with the current situation in Eastern Europe, the railway serves two purposes. One purpose is to interconnect the Baltic states into the European railway network and the other one is to bring the Baltics closer to Europe and away from Russia. Another European rail initiative is called ERTMS or European Rail Traffic Management System, which aims to improve the efficiency of railways with a better signaling system. The 27 member states of the EU are slowly implementing ERTMS and newer rail lines like the aforementioned Rail Baltica are being fitted with ERTMS by default. EU funds are also being heavily used to upgrade and refurbish train corridors like the S7 train line in Prague. This train line leads from the Prague main train station to the central bohemian town of Berón. This rail corridor is being used by all sorts of trains, from commuter trains to cross-country trains, so improving the corridor is absolutely going to bring massive benefits. European countries are also launching night train services between major cities. In my opinion, this is a viable alternative to driving or flying, since you can step on the train in the evening, get a good night's sleep and wake up at your destination instead of paying for a hotel at your destination. The most notable of these is the Euronight, which combines multiple national train operators to form a decent night train network. Public transit in cities is also being built out with EU funds. For example, the last two extensions of Prague's tram system have been financed with EU money. There is still so much work to be done though. For example, unlike air travel, the vast majority of train companies don't offer through tickets, meaning that if you miss your connecting train due to a delay or cancellation, you will most likely get no compensation or a very bad one if you're lucky. Booking international trips, especially those that require transfers, will damage your mental well-being because the networks and schedules between countries are far from interconnected. <laughs> Some countries also have different track gauges, for example, Spain, Portugal, Ireland, Finland and much of Eastern Europe, although this is being remedied by new high-speed rail lines which are being built in the standard European track gauge. 
signaling systems are also not standardized, but the aforementioned ERTMS system is being promoted to remedy this. Much of the electrification infrastructure is painfully fractured as well, with many different standards. The EU and national governments are slowly moving towards unifying electrification standards, but the universe will probably cease to exist before the unification is completed. In contrast, fractured track gauge, signaling and electrification isn't a problem for air travel, and booking through tickets on planes is as simple as going to one of the many flight aggregators like Google Flights, Skyscanner or Expedia. Passengers who get offloaded of their flight, get their flight delayed or cancelled have specific rights for compensation granted to them by EU Regulation 261-2004, including vouchers, accommodation, food or money. For some strange reason, this EU law doesn't apply to train travel, even though it badly needs it. Some progress is being made, the high-speed rail network of Europe is being extended over time and infrastructure is being upgraded and constructed, like the undersea train tunnel between Germany and Denmark. Short-haul flights with viable alternatives are being banned in some countries like France, although the French ban in particular unfortunately has some big loopholes. <laughs> In 1959, European national train operators and others came together to create Eurail, a trans-European railway pass. Right now, you can buy a Eurail pass and enjoy unlimited train travel across Europe for the duration of your pass. Individual nations are also getting in on the action. After Germany's summer 9 euro ticket proved to be a massive success, both in public transport ridership and in meme value with the creation of the 9 euro ticket tourist meme, the country released the Deutschland ticket. The Deutschland ticket is a country-wide public transport pass costing 49 euros per month. To put this in perspective, for 49 euros you can buy roughly 27.2 liters or 7.2 gallons of gas in Germany in June 2023. The Volkswagen Golf, a really popular small car in Germany, gets roughly 33 miles per gallon or consumes 7.1 liters per 100 kilometers of travel. That means that on average you can go 238 miles or 376 kilometers for 49 euros worth of gas. That might not sound too bad, but the calculation doesn't include maintenance, parking, insurance, car payments and other expenses. The Deutschland ticket is also valid on all German public transport except for long distance EC trains and high speed IC and ICE trains. Let's hope that the European rail renaissance continues and brings prosperity to the continent. If you're still here, thank you so so much for watching to the end, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next week, bye!